Hello and welcome to another Zodiac Weapon Showcase where today we're going to be having a look at the Ninja Relic. I am Wobzy and I will be your connoisseur for the evening once again or the day, whichever you, when you may be watching this. If you have been watching several of these Relic videos already, you should know the drill by now. And if this is your first time here, welcome. It's good to see you here. Hope you're having a great day. Here are the Yoshimitsu Blades, the very first stage that you receive after you have gone through all of the other trials and stuff like that and tribulations to get to this point. This is what it first looks like until you start working on the actual real meat and potatoes, as people would call it. I don't do the unfinished versions because they just look like these and they're kind of here and everywhere. This isn't a guide, this is a showcase of the first stage of a relic to the final stage of the relic so here we are as i said originally yoshimitsu blade which we'll see going through the stages first part off is it's as you can see is a very lovely pair of daggers slash short swords which suit the artifact armor of ninja very well very well indeed i am not wearing the artifact armor i'm wearing my sort of air quote Magitech Engineer Assassin uh, Glam, which I'm quite pleased with. Right, moving on to the next stage, which is what you receive after you have gotten all of the Atmas from the Fates. Oh boy. Because this is the stage you need to start it. Right, here we go. Apologies, jumping the gun a little bit there. We're not actually on the Atma Relic bit yet. The stage prior to that with nothing to do with the atmos with the fates that is just what you get once you've done all the bits to do with like the chimera the hydra etc 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 and you yeah you got that all finalized and finished all the little tasks they require you to do this is the yoshimitsu zenith where the, the glowy glows start to commence now compared to ones which we've seen already you can already see that the glow is a very different very aesthetically different it's almost kind of i don't know if you've played a lot of jrpgs or just games in general which have like weapons that are cursed um and it's kind of got that sort of glow of a cursed type weapon personally i quite like what this weapon looks like um it is just a very first simple stage of glow. All you need to do is get yourself the mist, put it into the furnace, and boom, there you go. And you're sorted. This is the bit which you use to actually farm the fates for the Atmos. Anyway, let's move on to the next stage once you have done that grind where you will be able to commence the books in that one. So, you've done the, uh, the Atmos. Well done. Here's the next stage. The Yoshimitsu Atma. At first glance, it does not look like it has changed at all. And I almost had to double check myself. But all that has really changed is, if you actually are quite attentive, is that this is now a little bit of gold on the actual uh, relic itself. It's the small details, but it's those small details that enhance the relic. But yes, congratulations, you are now on what most consider to be the harshest part of an A Realm Reborn Relic, which is the books. I'm currently going through them at the moment on my Black Mage. I still will stand and support and defend the books. I think they're all right, but I'm also insane, so, you know, ignore me. Once we have done the books, you will have to go back to the old man that is there at Four Guards Fort in North Shroud. And you will enhance it to the next stage where we get... It's pretty much nothing but shiny from here on forth. Let's keep going forward. Okay. Yoshimitsu Animus. You can see here the glow is very distinct compared to the previous glow that we actually had on the relics. If there's one thing I always do enjoy with any form of relics is the glow. It is no longer glowing with the red sort of cursed blaze look. Instead it is exuding a more blue, pure, ethereal 
type sort of glow instead. Personally, it's one of my more favorite types of glows, and it's kind of common within the, um, the Realm Reborn Relic stages with the Zodiacs. It tends to be this the sort of first glow and the very last final glow in the Zodiac weapons themselves differ from weapon to weapon. But this one kind of is very common. I think every single relic has this glow, in fact. So let's move on to the next relic, the next stage with the next glow. Let's go. The Yoshimitsu Novus relic stage. We've done this beer grid. We're all very proud of you. But the spear score should I say, not spear grid. That's completely different indeed. Those low rank materials are an absolute pain to get and they are expensive to boot. You'll soon find out why they sell for a lot more than other material on the market board. Thankfully, no other relics down the line really require you to actually affix material to rank it up, and I hope they never do it again. Standing here, you realise that the glow itself is golden once more, just like previous stages of relics, uh, and other versions, should I say, sorry. Suits it very well, it's almost blinding. Not very ninjury, not very assassiny, but that's okay, it doesn't matter, because at this point, You'll be farming light. And oh boy howdy. Will you be farming that light for a while? Let's see what happens once you've got to that stage, which is the Nexus. Here we are with the final stage until it evolves into the Zodiac weapon which you're aiming for. The Yoshimitsu Nexus. You have done your light farming, you have slaughtered thousands of mind flayers in Tamtara Deepcroft. Maybe thousands of mo uh, mobiles in Aurum Vale instead, which I would recommend. The glow is so strong emanating from these blades, which do look like cursed weapons once again. Quite frankly, it's my favourite type of glow with these uh, Aurum Reborn relics. That you can barely see your character's face while you're holding it near your head. Where you hold the actual blades themselves, you can see where the hand is on the actual handle. It is emanating with just black, raging energy. It's just coming. It's just like it's trying to escape, but you're holding it within the weapon itself. But the rings of power are emanating around the blade itself, and black energy oozes outwards and uh, inwards to your enemies as you uh, slash them and slay them. Well done. I'm getting this far. Honestly, it is a feat within itself, and I will still say that those who did this way back in the day, I salute you, good sirs and uh, madams, because, my god, I don't think I'd be able to have managed it back then. The grind must have been crazy, especially in this culture of now, now, now. Next, we will be looking at the actual finals, second form, maybe third form, final form, of this Zodiac Relic where it'll actually start turning into the Zodiac Relic itself. Let's go forth and have a little bit of a gander. I think that would be wise. And here we have the Zodiac Relic stage itself. Sasuke's Blades. The form has completely changed. It almost gives me the vibe of a weapon from Dynasty Warriors. If you've ever played Dynasty Warriors and you've, no and you've seen Zhao Dan, this is basically his weapon, but in two small short sword forms. Personally, it's one of my favourite looking ninja relics in the game so far. I think they really knocked it out of the park with this relic. And we're not even on the shiny phase yet. But we'll have a look at a few more of the details as well. We've got quite a, a fantastic and lovely Asian theme which emanates from this, really bringing out the sort of ninja look. Maybe it's supposed to be based off of, um, you know, maybe mythology like Sasuke itself, or not the Sasuke from Naruto, but an actual ninja in Japanese history. But also maybe from an actual uh, ninja from the Final Fantasy series himself. I think the ninja was called Sasuke in 4. I can't remember. But yes, the handle itself is just a nice simple black wrap, and near the end it's got its little phone strap or weapon little strap. I, I like to prefer to call them bow straps here and there. 
where it's got a little bell on it with these sort of like what would end up being the sort of family the ninja would represent um which has been shown in multiple other types of games as well the blade is thicker it's so thick it's got a lovely lovely gold and black blemish going through it and a nice little sort of this would hurt if you would be hit by it Let, let's be honest if you got hit by this it would hurt you and the best part about this stage as well it's dieable let's look at what the final final form is and just to why i love this ninja relic let's go forth and have a look so here we have it the final final form of the ninja relic sasuke's blade zeta or zeta whichever you wish to go by pronunciation wise it still keeps its wonderful form the glow is not overbearing you can still see the shape and the form the blade is now coated in a sort of ethereal red like extra glow which is just to show that it is like a little bit more powerful the aether which is now emanating from it it's like got little black hues coming from it too which i quite like that may not be the right terminology to use but god damn it that's the terminology i'm going to use you can see at the actual pommel itself oh sorry not the pommel the hilt itself i keep saying i keep getting it mixed up that's the pommel that's the hilt uh either way just before the blade <laughs> It is now exuding what almost gives me the impression of the moon of Dalaman. It's very Allegan-esque indeed. Not all the relics have this type of sort of look to them. And that's what I love about these ones. They all do have their own little glows and stuff like that too. Ninja came in late and that was okay. They did a good job. They did a fantastic job with the ninja and with the ninja relic. It's had its ups and downs through the different expansions and stuff like that too. But here you are. Your hard work is definitely being paid off. And I would say it is definitely worth it for the Ninja one. It is, once again, my favourite Ninja Relic so far. I'm looking forward to Endwalk as well. There's not much else to say. This is what it looks like and that is all. I will not try and pad this out. It's been a long enough video as it is. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you again for more Relic videos down the line. I hope you really do enjoy these series as much as I enjoy making them. Don't forget to follow, like and subscribe. Check us out on twitch.tv forward slash Wobzy. And have a fantastic day. And remember to bury the bodies. Ta-ta for now.